What I'm going to look at in this video is how to actually integrate um, your lights after you have created a bad pixel map and you've created your master bias and your master flats. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to set the work directory. Now, because I'm going to be doing the red, um, I'd like to set my directory as the red, and then I know where everything is. So I'm setting that directory, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to load my red lights. So that's 30 of them. Okay, then in flat, I have already got in the M13 folder, I've got my master bias, I've got my bad pixel map, and I've also got my master red flat. So what I've done is I've put all of those calibration files in the main M13 file, um, although I have left them in the calibration file as well, so I've copied them, just so I know exactly where everything is, because I did find that I got a little bit muddled where, with regards to where stuff was. So that's all opened. Now, as you can see down here, you've got all my lights opened. Um, it's telling you here that I have got a bias master that will go with the lights and I've got a bad pixel map that will go with the lights. Now, once I do a star analyze and then it will also throw up the flat and say that the flat fits with it. So after I've loaded all of those in, you can see they're all ticked. Let's just check that. There you go. You need to make sure that they're all ticked. And I'm then going to go to Analyze Stars. You don't need to go to Calibrate because you, your Calibration tab is used in order to create your calibration files. It's not to calibrate your data, if that makes sense. Um, what we can just check, if we want to at this moment in time, is, for example, how we think the, um, the bias and the bad pixel map is actually working. So if I click on a light here, in the screen here, you can see that it's shown that particular light. And if I click up here to linear calibrated, and then you can see that it has got rid of all the hot pixels, etc., in there using the bad pixel map. What it hasn't done at this stage is it hasn't got rid of the dust bunnies, etc., and the vignetting because it hasn't recognized that there's a flat to go with it, but it will do. So let's go to analyze stars. Now what I've done is I found that to for my longer focal length, I'm better with a slightly lower kappa and then slightly higher stars. So if I just press analyze stars now, and then what will that do is uh, down here, stars and star density, it will then fill that in and it will show us all the star data. As we can see here, this is now finished. It took maybe 30 seconds or so to do that. Um, you can see down here now that the flat has now kicked in and is now showing as being able to be used with a light. So let's just pick light number 10 again, which we just looked at. And this is it as the image. So this is it prior to any kind of calibration at all. And then if we click on L calibrated, I mean, this is a great thing to be able to do. You can see that the calibration is working a treat. The vignetting has gone, the edges have gone, and if we just zoom in as well, we can see that the bad pixel map has taken out virtually all of the bad pixels. There's a couple of very, very small bits and pieces here, but I'm quite happy that I'll be able to, um, to sort them out a bit later. So we've done analyze stars. What we're going to do now is we're going to register. And what it will do is it will, you can set a reference here. So if you want to do this, you can um, select a reference. So say, for example, I might want to select the first of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the red file that I've got here, which is actually number nine. So I can select that. That's, a, that's the reference file. So pretty much all of these now are set to default, to be honest with you. I'm using the dynamic distortion correction, and I've unticked the same camera and optics. The registration mode here is normal. 
and that's it. I've, everything is set to default. So now we just click on registration. And what that will do is it will start registering all of those red files to the one that we selected as the um, reference. OK, that's now registered. And you can see here that we have got the light. This is light number nine. It's got a bias master that can be assigned to it and can be calibrated with it. It's got a flat and it's got a bad pixel map. This here is showing that it has been calibrated. This is showing here that it's been star analyzed. And this here is showing that they've been registered. So we know so far that everything has been done that we need to do. Now, what I found is <clears throat> if I just go straight to integrate, and again, this is pretty much default. Um, likes to stack here 30 of 30 so I know that they're all good enough to be stacked um, sometimes I found that if the the star analyze isn't done very well if the if the um, if the cap is too high if it hasn't picked up enough stars and then maybe here I might have 28 of 30 so I just go back reanalyze the stars change the cap a little bit and then it works fine okay composition mode reference that's what we want to keep that to now I have found uh, in this data set that I am getting no benefit from having the LNC ticked. So I'm putting it as no LNC. The multi-band blending, I've got that ticked and I've got it set to 9%. What that's hoping to do is to get rid of and to help um, get rid of and combat the edges that you've got from frames where you've did it, etc. And the edges aren't all necessarily in the same place. So that's quite a good thing to have there, I think. Outlier rejection I've got here is Sigma Clip. Again, that's just something I found. You've got a couple of options there. If you click no rejection, and then if you've got satellite trails, etc., aeroplanes, and then they will come up. So I found Sigma Clip works very well, and I've kept this here to default, default settings. The pixel interpolation, the hmm, I'm not even going to try and say it. This filter is the one that seems to work very well. And make sure that tick here is no under overshoot. I'm not in interested in drizzle. This has all been left to default mode here. No drizzle scale one. Now, if you want to make your exposure, your your lights smaller, for example, and then you can change this. I've done this purely by mistake and then realize it. So if I put it to 0.5, um, my final stack will be half of the pixel length and pixel width. So I don't actually want to do that, but just so you know that that's what you can do. That's been a gotcha for me and mess things up a little bit. So now I just press integrate. Okay, so this now has integrated and we can see that down here. There we go. There's stack one. So if we double click on it, you can see here, this is stack one, all integrated. And ready to be saved. Now it does save a temporary folder, a uh, temporary file, and it tells you here where it saves it. But I like to just save it myself, and then I know what's happening. M13 red. Okay, and that now is ready to do some processing. You might now want to go in and look at remove light pollution. Um, Combining RGB, those things will be covered a little bit later, but this is how you get to an integrated image from this point. Get more information on this and other astrophotography tips, articles, and tutorials at the photographingspace.com website. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly tips newsletter and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials and video.